And good morning. Welcome in to you hype dorks, day traders, long-term traders, hype dorks. Good morning, everybody. Welcome in. Futures are up. Uh, somebody just said, is gold picking up? Yep, gold is picking up because as the dollar falls, as interest rates uh, start to climb, as other currencies, as we're seeing, now we're seeing a lot of, there, I have a story that I pulled about weakness in China that, and they are uh, adjusting rates accordingly. And the reason being is their their growth is slowing. So, and then what do they have to do? I actually, I can't believe that the uh, the Chinese regime over there is doing something that has to do with manipulating rates in any way. And, and to be honest with you, I looked at it. Here's the story right here that I'll pull up. But I looked at it saying, oh my gosh, their interest rates right now are so much higher compared to ours because they haven't touched them. But they're definitely in a better situation um, financially, I have to say, with the exception of building ghost cities everywhere. Uh, and if you guys don't know, if we start think, talking about these ghost cities that they were building it was that's part of this Evergrande thing they were literally going and building towns where nobody was ever going to live just to employ people uh, it was truly incredible but <clears throat> yeah whatever let's see futures are up a touch the nasdaq's always going to be more volatile it's up about one percent right now yesterday the day yesterday closed low i mean we that was a surprise surprise uh move to the day yesterday in the afternoon. Oh, it doesn't show. Hold on. Let me see what the NASDAQ did yesterday. I was actually very surprised. I, I walked out of a meeting and I was like, whoa, 1.15%. That's crazy. So, all right, let's get into some stuff and we'll go from there. We might as well start with the China stuff. China cuts rates, steps up monetary stimulus to boost the economy. Weird. Weird. Um... China has lowered its mortgage lending benchmark rates on Thursday as monetary authorities <coughs> monetary authorities set up efforts to prop up the slowing economy. They are being dampened by supply chain issues. They're also being dampened by what's happening with um, the coronavirus. They're they're kind of extreme over there. So I have no idea what happens in China. I don't hell of I know. I only know what I can see and what I read and what I see on the news. Actually, I don't watch the news. 
But with that being said, um, yeah, I have no idea. I guess coronavirus is bad over there. Many analysts are saying that those easing measures will be necessary, even as other major economies, including the United States, appear to be set to tighten monetary policy this year. They have uh, weakening consumption over there. They have weakened in the property sector, which is no surprise. That's been going on for multiple months. China has lowered its one-year uh, loan prime rate LPR by 10 basis points, 3.7 to 3 point, uh, 2, 2, 3.7 from 3.8. The five-year was reduced five basis points, 4.6 from 4.65, first cut since 2020. Chinese authorities are keen to lower the cost of credit lending, so the total credit growth is expected to rebound after the spring festival to ease. I have no idea what that means. All right. Why is BP down? Because that's what uh, stocks do. They go up and down. QQQ closes in the red today, in my opinion. Hey, who knows? This I mean, this is uh, this to me. See, I like what's happening now. I'd rather see stocks drop a little bit, like 1.5%, and then rebound 0.75 to 1%, then drop another 1.5%, rebound 1%. Not this, what we saw during uh, COVID. I don't want to see minus 13%, minus 10%. Markets are shut down because this, the breakers are in place and this and that. Because what if things fall that quickly, I don't want to see that. I actually, I talk about the W patterns that I see down. We can actually just pull up the S&P if you want. Well, I guess I don't know if you want to, but this is a dictatorship, so I'll just do it anyways. Okay, let's pull up a line chart. So here's what I, here's what I want to see. I want to see this thing come down and rebound a little bit like it's doing today and come down a little bit more and rebound a little bit and then come down a little more and rebound. And this is the pattern that I want to see on the way down. I do not want to see what we saw in uh, 2000 and 2000. I don't want to see this. This was just a drastic fall within a February. When did that start? February 19th. I think it was February 19th and it ended March 24th. So one month, one month stocks dropped 40%. Come on now. All right. <clears throat> back to the, back to the news. Um, Baba to zero. Okay. I know NetGo said that, so it's, I know he's joking, but anyways, American Airlines posts slightly higher revenue. So guys, I'm telling you airports have been jam packed. I know I don't, if you, if you guys have been going to the airports, let me know what you've seen and where you've been. I, I was in Atlanta, Mexico city, um, and Cleveland, and they were all packed. Actually, Cleveland wasn't that packed. Mexico city was swamped. Atlanta was absolutely swamped. So where do I see copper going? Copper, um, copper going, copper is going to go with every other metal. American Airlines posted its highest, highest revenue of the pandemic during the fourth quarter as booking ro bookings rose, but it still reported its second annual loss, which is no surprise. I mean, they've had a rough year. $3.4 billion in revenue versus the $3.38 expected. I'm uh, truly, I think that the airlines are going to get hit a little one more time maybe maybe i i hope so for selfish reasons because i want to i want to get into jets with a cost basis under 20 bucks but um hey who knows if that's going to happen but if this market starts to fall yeah it's going to happen okay it is 6 minutes and 30 seconds into the show and somebody already got banned so congrats all righty what's next oh this is a sweet story amazon to open a fashion store where algorithms suggest what to try on. So I hate shopping. I hate clothes. If you've noticed from my outfit, I'm actually wearing silver today, but it happens to be something that I just have multiple colors of. I don't like wearing clothes, but this is pretty sweet. A magic closet. It's true. I do not like wearing clothes. I think that it, they're annoying. Last night I, I got home from dinner and I walked out and I had a hoodie on and underwear and, uh, I don't like wearing pants. It's just a weird thing. A magic closet fitting room. The online retailer is making another push to grow its fashion business. At 30,000 square feet, the planned Amazon style shop near Los Angeles is smaller than the typical department store. Model items are on racks and customers can scan a code using the Amazon mobile app, select a color, select a the size they would like to try on. To try on the clothes, which are stored in the back, shoppers enter a virtual queue for a fitting room that they unlock with their smartphone when they're ready. Inside the dressing room is a personalized space for you to continue shopping with, with, uh, without having to leave. You push something on the screen, they come to you. Magic closet, magic everything. Amazon's incredible. 
it, Amazon is really incredible. So uh, down the road, they're building this Amazon uh, grocery store, one of those grocery stores where you don't have to check out or talk to anybody. You just walk in and put items in your cart and the it, it knows what items you're putting in your cart. You walk out of the store, you're done. It's wonderful. Uh, pants are for hype dorks. Yeah, pants are for hype dorks. Uh-huh. Okay. Speaking of hype dorks, meme stocks. Interactive Brokers founder says that a lot of people will lose a lot of money. Duh. But I want to pull up the chart. So meme stock idea, it's not sustainable, blah, blah, blah. Here, look at this chart. This chart is this chart is awesome. Can I blow this up a little bit? Yeah. Meme stocks struggling in 2022. But look where they were, guys. This is this purple line is AMC. This thing was up over 3,000% in June of 2021. Oh, what, what is going on here? <laughs> I remember when this all happened. It, it was so, so funny. Um, what was the... Was it GameStop? I think it was GameStop. When everything happened, I was like, ah, I'll just I'll just day trade GameStop. And this was before we had this set up. If you guys remember, oh my gosh, this is going back to like April or May of 2021, maybe 2021. But I did a morning show where I day traded GameStop live on the air. And we made 10% within a matter of like uh, two minutes or something like that. And then I just sold it and... and I donated the money to charity, but it was fun. Anyways, look at this. Almost up 2,000% on costs. I don't know what that is. And GameStop and EXPR, I have no idea what that is, but it was almost 1,000%. And now look at this. They're all coming back to reality. Actually, AMC is in the best situation. So if you own AMC, um, just keep YOLOing your life into it, and you will be in a better place. That was sarcasm, by the way. I don't want to talk about Microsoft right now. I want to talk about this. European markets... Fall is Eurozone inflation hits 5%. So they hit 5% inflation. The inflation is higher than the wages. So if that sustains for a while, you, uh, you burnt. That's not going to be good. Energy prices raise, were rising a staggering 26% year over year as gas and electric bills within the household. Food is up 3.2%. Uh, here's my favorite part of the story. And I wrote this in because I wanted to remember to say it. The... Chris, Christine Langard, president of the European Central Bank, said, Inflation in the Eurozone will decrease gradually over the year as its main drivers, such as surging energy prices and supply bottlenecks, are expected to ease. Why? Why are they expected to ease? Because you said they're expected to ease? There's nothing happening that's, that's saying that these supply chain bottlenecks or surging energy prices are expected to ease. I don't understand why these people just keep saying this over and over and over about like, yeah, in the spring, it's going to cool down. Why? Give us a reason why. This is the same thing as saying inflation is transitory. Why? And then it turned out that it wasn't transitory. Just stop saying things. If you don't change, you, they said it was going to be the spring. Okay, well, right now it's January, and they started saying that it was going to be in the spring in like September of August of 2021. So does that mean that's been an extra four months? So now are we going to say instead of spring, it's going to be going into the, the beginning of fall? I mean, what is going on here? These people just just say words that it's like, uh, if you remember in the office, this is a, I love this coral. It, 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 when Pam put her her glasses on because she she slept over at Jim's house and she forgot her contacts, and Michael looks at her while she's talking and he just says, "I just hear words coming on out of coming out of an ugly face." It's exactly what these people are. They just say words that mean nothing to make everybody try to feel good. It's, 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 it's nonsense. Okay. Where are we? Um, before I go to the next story, let's see. My nephews work at Amazon fresh. Is that the uh, Amazon fresh? Oh, Olivia, Olivia and, uh, Z B Z honeybee. Well, let me know how those stores are. Big correction to flush out all the retail investors. I, I was joking with Tim the other day. I hope all the retail investors and all these hype dorks, uh, just go and start trading in the metaverse. That would be wonderful. Um, Fang is overpriced, but would you see their earnings? Eh, who knows? I made a few hundred percent. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. All right. Anyways, Microsoft's bid for Activision. So there's two things. So of course, here's the deal, guys. I, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Just just so you you hear it. To me, this is an arbitrage play. I mean, by definition, it's an arbitrage play. If the deal closes, the stock price right now for ATVI is eighty two dollars. Microsoft is buying them for $95 per share in all cash. If the deal closes, 
you're gonna make the you're gonna make the difference right here between 82 and if you say you bought it today, 82 and 95. Now, if the deal doesn't close, that's not gonna work out, and and ATVI will probably get cut in half. So here's the hurdles that need to be overcome, according to Alexis Keenan and whomever she interviewed. Microsoft will need to set. <laughs> Microsoft will need to satisfy uh, U.S. and global antitrust regulators that its ensuing deal won't harm competition. Okay, what's more, my, to me, this is a, this is a, this is nothing. They're not going to close a deal because of culture. Um, Microsoft will have to manage probes and lawsuits beleaguering Activision Blizzard over al alleged sexual allegation, harassment, and discrimination against female staff. I'm telling you right now, it's not going to hold up a deal. Um, uh, yeah, I don't care about that. Xbox Factor. Here's here's where it gets. Here's where the here's where the concern comes. I should say Xbox um, combining with the gaming content for Activision Blizzard will it could it will catch regulators' attention. Already, you're seeing questions about uh, whether Microsoft would take its Activision Blizzard content and make an exclusive to Xbox. I would. Why not? There's nothing wrong with exclusivity by itself. Uh, this person says. The question is whether that the gain, gaining control over Activision's games would give Microsoft the ability to raise prices and or otherwise harm consumers because gamers would be unwilling or unable to switch away. Unwilling? Don't you think that's a personal issue if, it, if they're unwilling? <sighs> Living in a world I don't understand, guys. Unwilling. Unwilling. So if... If I'm unwilling to switch from, from Ford to GM, that's GM's problem. That's GM's problem. That's Ford's problem. That's GM's problem. What the hell does that even mean? Unwilling. It's a personal choice. All right. Uh, futures are futures are doing what now? 15 minutes later. Still the same. Uh, 10 years really ticking up. And I don't think this, uh, maybe, I, th I thought it hit 1.9%. I thought it hit 1.9. The three month is ticking up for sure. Pay attention to earnings, guys. Netflix reports after the bell today. American Airlines reported this morning, as we already talked about. Anything else that I'm noticing? No. And then tomorrow, make sure, make sure you're watching Slumberjay reports. And then going into next week, next week's a big one. IBM, Monday, IBM, Halliburton, Logitech, uh, Pet, Pet, uh, Pet Med Express, Tuesday, Microsoft, GE, Verizon, Johnson & Johnson, Lockheed Martin, 3M. Wednesday, Tesla. Good luck to all you hype dorks. If you want to join the software and our website, here's the front page of the Everything Money website. The world is a vampire. <laughs> uh, here, here it is. So if you want to join the software, the software, you get eight pillars um, software. Retirement calculator, which is awesome. Stock analyzer tool, which is awesome. Eight pillars portfolio, you can build, basically build your own ETF, which is pretty great. Uh, exclusive content that comes out every single day in the chat. You get news on the website. Here it is, a bunch of news. See more, it's just endless news. You also get it on the mobile app. So everything that you need is on your phone, which is pretty great. And I'll tell you something right now, guys. I don't, I, I don't think we say this enough. If you go and try to look at any financial data from any app, I'm talking Google, Yahoo, any Y charts, it doesn't work. It, it, it's, it's crap on the phone. Just going through an income statement, a balance sheet, cash flow statement. We got it on the iPhone app or and Android app. So $30 a month gets you access to all that. If you want to join the Bid and Ask Nation with me, uh, $80 a month will get you that. You get the Employed Trader series. You get the Trading 101 series. You get my monthly Saturday seminars, which I may be doing one this Saturday. I'm going to decide today and I'll blast it out to you in the chat and let you know. Um, cause I want, I, I know it's a little late notice, but just looking forward at my calendar, this might be the last Friday that I could do it. I mean, Saturday I could do it for a while. Um, yeah, just come and join me. Let's do some stocks and you'll see what you get with all of that. Learn the rules, et cetera. Okay. 1000% gains a day only Mo. <laughs> a thousand percent or bust, right? Today's key earnings. Thank you. Not reading explanation. I don't know what that means. Sony says... Um, games will stay in PlayStation. Sweet. They, I mean, Sony already does it. There's companies that already do it. That's, uh, whatever. DGX. DGX. I'm not even a gamer and I know this stuff. Oh, snap. Look at this. When, okay, so when's their dividend? When did that come out? January 18th. So that was two days ago. When do they report earnings? 
February 3rd. All right, so right now, just zooming out, your whole, actually, you're not. Let me pull up the crosshairs. Look at this. Here was your resistance point, and you notice that the, the, the candle's already below it. So you've dropped below your 200-day moving average. Got, whoever asked this question, this is a beautiful short. You have a big gap down. I wouldn't even worry about uh, filling that gap up right now. If you get a break like this, engulfing candlestick, short this thing because you have great looking stochastics coming down. You're clear of the 100 day, mo uh, 200 day moving average. You will be coming down to this 125 level. This is a really good looking stock. Um, please, please short it. Um, what else do we have? Valet. Valet looks strong to me. Valet looks strong to me. Let's see. V-A-L-E. Abdul. Yeah, Mo. Exclusive games are not new at all. I'm not sure why people are surprised. I'm not sure why people are surprised. What do you think their play was? I mean, if I'm if I'm if I'm Microsoft and I'm going and spending what was it, 65, 68 billion, whatever it is, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to take all of those games exclusively to Xbox because I've been lagging behind Sony for years in that space. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know who makes Halo. Is that Activision Blizzard or somebody else? I, I have no clue. I don't play video games unless it's MLB The Show when I'm super bored during quarantine. Um, valet. Okay, so here's the deal with this one. Be careful because you're getting a lot of movement around here. You got a big gap up. You got a big jump here. So if you're in this, I don't like how this stochastic was going like this and then just boom, it went up. So if I'm you and you're in this, take profits and then just keep adding on the way up. It'll probably run into the 200-day moving average and fall back down. You're getting good volume. Very, this is, this is interesting. I would, I would want to see like an engulfing candlestick like this or this. That would give me a little more confidence that things are a little bit smoother, but it's not the worst. Just keep paying attention to it. Um, oh my God, Mo knows Halo. Microsoft makes Halo. Xbox, oh really? They already made, they, I didn't know that. Well, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that Microsoft made any games. Alibaba's up 6%, 6.5% pre-market. Yee, yee. Apple. Here's my thoughts on Apple. I really hope... <laughs> Here's my hopes on Apple. I hope Apple goes to like uh, $100 sometime soon. Um, but to me, that is a, one of the best companies in the entire world. Um, listen, it, I don't think Apple's going anywhere, and I don't even think Apple's gotten started. So Dell. Dell had a bad day yesterday. <laughs> Dropped a couple dollars. I need a cough button. Ugh, excuse me. Hold on a second. <coughs> All right. So, you know what? Whoever asked me this question, I would look at it from a swing trading standpoint and try to short this thing before I go long on it. Let everything, let this settle down. This is a very big move for one day on a company like Dell, although it does look like it moves quite a bit. Yeah, just swing trade it. Uh, somebody asked me about CLF and I told him I would do it. And okay, so CLF is doing a reversal right now. So it's not a short. So that this gap right here, this let me draw it in blue. This gap that we're seeing right here, that is called the trap door. So those of you that are wondering what the trap door is, that is the trap door. So as soon as that red line goes like this and the yellow line goes like this and they cross, and they, that that blue gap closes, that's a trap door close. And that gives you confidence that you're actually in a, a down or uptrend, depending on which way you're going. But right now, the gap is still open. If you want to do anything, come over on a swing trading chart and uh, go from there. Um, Do you really see Apple going under $150? 100% I see Apple going 100, 100, under $150. Listen, you have five stocks that have taken this market in the past decade and moved it about 40 to 45%. Those five stocks are Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, Netflix, and definitely Microsoft. I don't know why Microsoft isn't thrown in there, but that's it. And those that lead the market up are going to lead the market down. Apple is going to get hit. It, it's just, it, it just is what it is. They got hit during now. Are they going to rebound better than everybody else because they have a solid foundation? Yeah, absolutely. But they're going to get hit. People are going to panic. Okay. Microsoft makes shooters, games. Oh, that's cool. Um, let's see here. What else do we have? I, th I saw a question that I wanted to answer, and then I missed it. 
Mo, is a NASDAQ entering correction? Yeah, I think I think the NASDAQ has technically entered correction territory, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I'm pretty sure we're technically in correction territory. Don't quote me on that. Is, Pel is Peloton too cheap to ignore? Interesting question. So Peloton, to me, I spent a lot of time thinking about this one, and man... I just don't know. Like I look at, to me, there's this company just screams buyout opportunity by somebody. And I've said it for a long time, Apple. I just don't see how a company like Apple, who's trying to kick off Amazon health or fitness or whatever the hell they call it, doesn't go in there and buy something like this and just give a massive boost. Uh, you saw Lululemon did it with the mirror, but Lululemon really isn't the same as Apple. Amazon, I could see doing it. They have their Echelon bike. I'm sure nobody even knew the name of it, but they have the Echelon bike, which is competitor to the Peloton. Ter terrible competitor, but um, yeah, I don't know. Apple is not that high valued. It's fair. Uh, I'm not arguing that. But, well, technically, I do believe that Apple is slightly overvalued. Yeah, I do believe it's slightly overvalued. I think the va the fair value for Apple if you really want to give a true fair value, is about $130, $135 a share. So it's not much more than anything, but it's it's gonna it's gonna get hit with everything else. Um, AMD. But to answer your question on Peloton, I don't know. You got to do your research on it. I, I did my research and I can't figure it out. I can't figure out what the path forward is. I can't make any projections that are of any uh, certainty. So. AMD, uh, yeah, if you get a break, if you get a breakdown and take out this bottom wick, like let's say you do get two candlesticks like that, go for it, add on it. You're going to, yeah, see that bottom wick is just below the 100 day moving average. So if you clear the 100 day moving average, you could take this thing down to the 200 day moving average. Just pay attention and make sure there's more selling volume than buying, buying volume. What do you think of Intel earnings and their bit, 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 BTC mining chip? I'm assuming it means Bitcoin. Well, I don't really care about that. Um, Intel, Intel reports when next week, January 26th. Yeah. So next week, um, listen, this is what happens to Intel on earnings. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Here's, here's Intel on earnings. Every single earnings gap, um, gap here gap. It's just, they just, they always gap on earnings. So I assume they're going to gap up here or they're going to gap down here. So we'll see what happens. Uh, luckily, I have options, uh, covered calls expiring on Friday on um, Intel at 58 bucks. So I'm, I'm excited to get out of that one. So uh, let's see here. Supposed to be an eco-friendly, the chip for mining Bitcoin. I don't even know what that means. Um, why aren't banks roaring while interest rates are rising? Something doesn't add up. John, you and me both. You and me both. Disney. What do we got with Disney. Uh, so Disney's been in an interesting place. Okay, so they have had a recent gap down. So now they have two gaps to fill. They have this one and this one. I actually... Uh, okay, so here's the deal with Disney. With what it's been doing lately, it looks like it's going to turn down again. And it's just going to go sideways here down on the for, for a while. It probably won't drop below this 142 level unless the rest of the market goes. And you see the susceptibility to market that Disney is. Disney is susceptible to this market uh, just as much as everybody else. <laughs> the Intel chart is so fun. The Intel chart is ridiculous. Go long on Disney at this level. No, I mean, if you're basing it on a chart, no, because you are you have no trend going for you. If you want to do it on a, uh, if you want to do it on a uh, long-term perspective, value perspective, go for it. Okay. NEO, he said, or she said, can you look at Lucid and do you believe in this company for a hold. I think that Lucid is, um, how do I put this politely? Dumb right now, but do they make a sweet car? Do they make a sweet concept of a car and deliver a few of them? Yes. Um, this is all, I, I mean, I would not be trading this thing from a long-term perspective just because of the, the volatility that's in there. If you wanna swing trade it, you can. Better yet, I'd come over here on a day trading chart. This is a 15 minute chart, LCID, and day trade it because Let's see, do we even get good moves? So we get pretty good, man, we get, I'm actually quite surprised. So the idea behind day trading is you wanna spend the majority of your time above this red line when you're going long and below this red line when you're going short. And the majority of the time, it looks like Lucid is actually spent in the middle here, which is not ideal for day trading. So 
Huh, I'm actually surprised. I don't know. To me, no. Lucid is not good for a long-term hold. I, they, they don't even do anything. It's a pure speculation if you want to do something with it. What is happening with Corsair? Let's see. Haven't looked at Corsair in a while. Are they the headphone people? Excuse me. Um, head, what is happening with Corsair? I don't know. Oh, boy. It's just a dog stock. That's all it is. So they had this incredible run. Uh, they topped out. And what was this? What was this high? Let's see what this was when they were the best thing in the world. I remember everybody was talking about this thing last year. $51.37. That was November 24th of 2020. Uh, and today they're 20 bucks. So um, with the exception of all of this and this, it's just a dog stock. They came through the sweet spot down and they've just been going sideways for a long time. And as you go sideways on the bottom like this, your stock price declines. And that is all this is. So if you want to put a tracker share on for 20 bucks, have fun and you go from there. So the deal is if you put a tracker share on, you will have, uh, you will have, um, worst case scenario, Corsair goes out of business, you lose $20. Nicola had $1,000 in revenue. Oh, cool. I had more than $1,000 in revenue yesterday. That's pretty sweet. Um, what are your moving averages? 25, 50, 100, and 200. Starbucks is dropping like a rock. Yeah, so somebody asked me about Starbucks yesterday. I said short it. If you get an engulfing candlestick, I mean, everything is looking really good on Starbucks. Keep shorting it. Um, uh, they have this uh, nonsense about, I have no idea what it is. I don't even know if it's at the Supreme Court, court level. I don't know, no, nor do I really care about something about vaccines. Everybody's trying to boycott them, this and that. You know what I'm going to do since everybody's trying to boycott them? Uh, I'm going to go to Starbucks today. And uh, that's, that's what I'm going to do. All right, let's see. I love your work and personality and love from Iraq. Hey, what's up, buddy? Okay. Oh, Visa and AT&T after the, after the 5G change. I, I forgot about 5G. No wonder I've had a headache for 24 hours. I'm just kidding. All right. Um, so AT&T bouncing off a 200-day moving average. No surprise there. When, when, you get a, when you get into the 200-day moving average, it's tough for you. And they're getting good volume, so there's a good chance that they push through this 200-day moving average. I like what I'm seeing. Uh, Verizon... Let's see what Verizon's doing. So they touched the, they got up to their 200 day moving average. What was it last week, two weeks ago? Couldn't do it. Market's open right now. Um, and sheesh, I don't know. Good question. Here, Tony just said, is Lucid worth a dollar? I have no idea. I, I really don't. Lucid isn't worth, they, they, I can't determine what their worth is right now because I don't know. They don't have anything. They don't have anything to say they're worth this or not worth this. It's 100% it's speculation. All right, I'll do two more stocks. Facebook, do you think Facebook will hit 308? I sure hope so. I don't know why you arbitrarily picked 308, but let's see, 308. I don't know why you picked 308. Maybe the bottom of this candle, but I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, I think I think Facebook's gonna do the same thing as Apple. It's gonna, it's gonna turn down. So here we go, going sideways, trying to boot back up, but it's just gonna come, I think it's gonna come down and just go sideways for a while, especially if the rest of the tech stocks fall. But I really hope that that starts uh, falling a little bit. Okay, let's see, one more stock, one more stock. Who wants a stock? Lucid will kick everybody's ass. Okay, sounds good, Coco. Um, let's see, let's see, let me do one more stock. Oh, Bloomin' Brands, B-L-M-N. You got it, B-L-M-N, Bloomin', all right. Where's their high? Oh boy, look at that run up. So they were, I don't know why, but they were just, a, they exploded during COVID, probably because everybody ate out, maybe. I got takeout and then it fell back down trying to rebound. So right now you have a trap door, it's open. Same situation as that other stock that we saw. I can't remember what it was, but the trap door is open. So you got to let that red line fall below yellow. And if that happens, you're going to drop below the 50 day moving average right here and you'll be off to the races to the downside. So I'd keep paying attention to this. Weak volume means good things for shorting people. And um, yeah, it's looking good. Let this trap door close. Let it get, let it, let it engulf down. And you got something. You definitely got something. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Same time, same place tomorrow. Don't forget, those of you that are community members, we have a uh, 2 p.m. live stream today. Myself, Paul, and Seth. And also, tomorrow morning, at 10 a.m., 
book club with me. First chapter of Richer, Wiser, Happier on Monish Pabrai. And uh, we'll do it. You guys have a great day. See ya.